The Scotiabank Convention Center here in Niagara Falls is celebrating their second birthday today. TV Kojiko is here to join in on all of the festivities. Okay. Two, Two, three. three. I'm going sideways with Mike. <laughs> Great. So there we go. Ta -da. It's been a great two years. You know, the industry is loving this building. We are winning a lot of bids. People are coming back now repeatedly. We're hearing that when they have an event here, they get greater attendance than they do any other city. So it's really being warmly accepted. And what were some of the challenges that you faced? We faced the challenge at first of, of getting staff in that understood what a center did and getting them up and running like one. And then once we figured that out, then we took the challenge to break it and redo it and do it differently and do it better. So, you know, it took a few months to figure that out and how do we enhance what other centers are doing and make this really the destination of choice. And your background was in New Orleans, was it not? It was. I was last in a center outside of New Orleans. Um, I've kind of floated around a lot in different cities, so it's always exciting to start a new building. And was business in the United States different than it is here in Canada? Yes, <laughs> it was different. Um, America's a little bit more louder, bigger, badder, new. We love new. Let's go for new. Um, Canadians are a little bit more reserved. They're sort of, you know, safer and let us see first how you do and convince us that you're in. And, and then they're very loyal and they'll come back to you over and over and over. So it was a different start and a great ending. Well, I guess the second anniversary is uh, just an opportunity to be happy we're here for two years and that we have a convention center. It uh, took probably 25 years to uh, be able to accomplish this, and uh, it's really a, a great celebration, not only for the convention center, but for the tourist industry, for people who work in the industry, for job opportunities, and uh, any community that is a tourist destination not to have a convention center uh, is missing a big part of the puzzle. Well, first of all, I, I would find it very difficult for people to be critical of this facility because uh, there are no municipal taxpayer dollars involved. Uh, we're not taking anything out of the city budget to subsidize this. Uh, it was totally built by provincial and federal funding. Uh, the Ontario Lottery and Gaming, the Falls Management Company, and the uh, stakeholders in the Falls View area put up a million dollars a year for 15 years. Victoria Center BIA put up $100,000 a year for 15 years. And this is to make sure that there is no deficits and it doesn't impact on the local taxpayers. I think of it as a piece of the puzzle, piece of the missing uh, piece of the puzzle, because Niagara Falls has huge infrastructure in terms of hotel rooms. We've got more than 16,000 hotel rooms, great restaurants, all sorts of attractions, but no convention center. And the beauty about a convention center is they're busy primarily in the shoulder season. So we're already busy in the summer. We don't need more people necessarily then. We need them year-round so that all of our employment opportunities become year-round. And this does just that. It brings lots of heads in beds in the shoulder season, which makes employment year-round. And when people think of the convention center, they think of attracting convention business to Niagara Falls. But you've also hosted various events that locals can attend and they find enjoyment in going to. Is that true? It is true. We, um, we have often had events in-house where people thought there was no one here because if you didn't belong to that company or that association, you had no reason to be here. But then comes the spring season and that's the chance for a whole lot of locals to start using the building because we have all those consumer shows like Comic-Con, which is growing massively this year and that's really exciting. And Home and Garden, which was back for their third time last weekend. And then there's the theater. And so we're really staking ground with our students that they get to come every Christmas and see live Broadway plays. And concerts and the symphony came once so those opportunities are really great for the locals as well. So speaking of events do you have any up-and-coming events that you want to let our viewers know about? Oh we do the food and wine show is in two weeks and that's only for grown-ups but it's a heck of a lot of fun to come in and just try different kinds of wines and food and I mean we are the culinary center of the world as far as I'm concerned and then there's the comic-con which is the following month and that's a really great family event it's just fun it's fun to be out and dress up and act silly and have a good day and there's some other things going on with dance groups and the cheerleaders which come back for their third time in May which is 20,000 of them yes it's spectacular and they're flipping as high as the ceiling it's just fun to watch and they're all over town. So my cameraman wanted me to ask you, the rumor has it that you were here in this very center on New Year's Eve partying with Dead Mouse. Is that true? Can you confirm? Uh, I know nothing of what you speak. 
happy birthday goes out to the Scotiabank Centre today who turns two years old. For more information on up and coming events, you can look at the website listed below. Reporting for The Source, I'm Bianca Tamori.